Along the coastlines of Indonesia, life moves with a rhythm shaped by the sea. Markets open with sunrise, fishing boats glide across calm water, and millions of people go about their day with little sign of the force hidden far beneath their feet. But deep under the Indian Ocean, one of the most powerful geological systems on Earth has begun showing signs that it may be preparing for another major event. This system is the Sunda Megathrust, the same fault responsible for the 2004 earthquake and tsunami, one of the deadliest disasters in modern history. And today, scientists are watching it closely because several segments along this fault have fallen unnaturally quiet. Not peaceful, but the kind of quiet that builds when a compressed spring refuses to move. Along the western coasts of Sumatra and Java, entire sections of the Sunda megathrust have not released significant energy in centuries. These are known as locked segments, regions where the Indian-Australian plate continues to push beneath the Eurasian plate, but the crust above refuses to slip. Each year, GPS sensors anchored on shorelines and installed on the seafloor detect subtle westward motion as the overriding plate is dragged toward the trench, unable to break free. The strain is measurable, steady, and unmistakable. This kind of deformation isn't something a person would ever feel, but the instruments feel it constantly, recording a silent battle between the plates below. And strain like this can only accumulate for so long. To understand why these quiet zones matter, we have to return to the moment when the world witnessed the full power of this fault. In 2004, a massive portion of the Sunda megathrust suddenly ruptured, producing a magnitude 9.1 earthquake and lifting the seafloor by several meters. The water it displaced raced outward as a devastating tsunami that killed more than 230,000 people across 14 countries. But even an event of that scale did not release all the tension locked within the megathrust. The 2004 rupture affected mainly the northern section of the fault. The central and southern portions, particularly the Mentawai region, Engano, Java, and the Sunda Strait Zone, remain locked to this day. These are the segments scientists are monitoring with growing attention. One of the most concerning areas lies southwest of Sumatra. Known as the Mentawai Seismic Gap, this section of the megathrust has a long history of producing enormous earthquakes. Geological evidence from coral uplift studies and coastal sediments shows a repeating cycle. Roughly every two centuries, the Mentawai segment ruptures violently. The last major events occurred in 1797 and 1833. Nearly 200 years have passed since then, yet the fault has remained largely silent. Coral microatolls around the island subtly record the ongoing deformation, sinking slowly as the overriding plate is pulled downward and locked into place. This steady flexing of the crust is a clear sign that strain is accumulating, not releasing. The amount of stored energy in this region is comparable to what preceded the 2004 earthquake. And that is why the Mentawai Gap is often described as one of the most dangerous seismic zones on Earth. Farther southeast, another silent stretch draws equal concern. The Java segment of the Sunda megathrust has no well-documented history of producing a truly massive earthquake in the modern era. For a subduction zone that stretches thousands of kilometers, this absence of major rupture is unusual. Studies show that parts of the plate boundary offshore Java are tightly locked, moving with the subducting plate but refusing to slip. GPS networks and ocean bottom instruments detect continuous strain along this section, and the crust above shows signs of being slowly dragged toward the trench. The stakes here are enormous. Java is one of the most densely populated islands in the world. Cities like Jakarta, Bandung, and Surabaya sit close enough that a major rupture offshore could bring intense shaking, and in southern coastal towns, tsunami arrival times could be measured in minutes rather than hours. Across the entire length of the Sunda megathrust, scientists observe a pattern that points toward persistent stress along large parts of the fault. Much of the plate boundary behaves like two surfaces pressed tightly together, holding firm despite the enormous forces acting upon them. When a fault behaves this way, the motion of the descending plate is absorbed almost entirely as stored energy. Along the edges of these locked zones, tiny earthquakes appear, not large enough to be felt, but clustered in ways that outline the boundaries of the stuck segments. These microquakes are not dangerous on their own, but they reveal where stress is accumulating and where the crust is adjusting under pressure. In some areas, the megathrust releases strain in slow, silent slips that last days or weeks. 
These slow events do not indicate an imminent quake, but they show that the deeper parts of the fault are moving in ways the shallow crust cannot. This contrast between deep motion and shallow locking is exactly the kind of behavior seen on other subduction zones before major ruptures. Even the coastline records this tension. Some regions gradually subside as the crust bends downward, while others slowly rise. Coral reefs, GPS stations, and satellite measurements all show that the overriding plate is being stretched and warped as the megathrust remains locked in place. If one of these segments finally gives way, the consequences will depend entirely on which portion fails. A rupture along the Mentawai segment would send powerful shaking across western Sumatra, followed by a tsunami that could reach the coast in as little as 10 to 20 minutes. The shape of the sea floor there allows waves to rise quickly, and low-lying regions could see flooding reach far inland. If the Java segment were to rupture, the shaking would threaten urban centers directly, and southern Java's coastal towns would have only minutes to respond to any incoming wave. Given the population density of the island, even a slightly delayed warning could have devastating effects. In rare circumstances, neighboring segments can rupture together, producing earthquakes among the largest ever recorded. While scientists do not assume this will happen, they must consider the possibility the Sunda megathrust is long, complex, and capable of cascading failures, much like the event that struck Japan in 2011. None of this means a major rupture is imminent, but all of it reflects what the megathrust has done repeatedly throughout geological history. Store energy quietly, then release it suddenly. The goal of studying these signs is not to frighten people. It is to understand a system that affects millions of lives. No scientist can predict the exact moment a megathrust earthquake will occur, and responsible researchers never claim one is imminent without evidence. But the indicators now observed, the locked sections, the long periods of seismic silence, the slow bending of the crust, the microquakes marking the fault's edges, and the deep slipping events, all fit the pattern of a subduction zone that continues to accumulate strain. These features do not announce a coming disaster, but they do reveal the underlying forces shaping the region's future. Understanding these forces allows communities to prepare long before the fault ever breaks. Since 2004, Indonesia has built one of the most advanced tsunami early warning systems in the world. Buoys, seafloor pressure sensors, GPS deformation networks, and real-time seismic monitoring work together to detect sudden shifts along the megathrust. While technology cannot prevent an earthquake, it can provide precious seconds, sometimes minutes, that allow people to move to safety. Equally important are the human systems. Throughout vulnerable regions of Sumatra and Java, schools and villages practice evacuation drills. Children learn exactly where to run when an alarm sounds and how to reach higher ground without hesitation. In many communities, these drills have cut evacuation times to mere minutes, a difference that can save lives when tsunami travel times are so short. Indonesia's coastline is long and complicated, but communities across the region have shown extraordinary resilience, building knowledge and readiness that did not exist before 2004. So is the Sunda megathrust preparing for another massive event? The truth is that no one can say when a rupture will occur, but scientists can say with confidence that stress is still building, that several major segments remain locked, and that the crust above them continues to deform under the strain. These signals do not predict a timeline, but they do confirm that the forces behind the 2004 disaster are still active, still accumulating energy, and still shaping the future of the region. Whether the next major event happens tomorrow or generations from now, the Sunda megathrust remains one of the most powerful natural systems on Earth and one of the most closely studied. The silence beneath the Indian Ocean is not a sign of peace. It is the sound of pressure building slowly, invisibly, and inevitably. But knowledge transforms that silence into understanding, and understanding becomes preparation. Awareness does not remove risk, it reduces vulnerability. And in a region where minutes can define survival, that awareness makes all the difference. Which segment do you think poses the greatest threat? Mentawai, Java, or the Sunda Strait? Share your thoughts below. I'm reading every comment.